this. What is topic number five? This is from Benji the Husky. It's amazing he can type with his paws. <laughs> so Tom Cruise and Top Gun did it. They impressed with a 134 million domestic opening Ooh. weekend at the box office. Just to be clear, that's actually incorrect. I think it's 126. Oh, just, okay. just so you know. Anyway. They also got over 40 crowd going, uh, going back to the movies, 55% of ticket buyers, since the pandemic began. I watched the movie at my local IMAX theater on opening night and definitely noticed a different crowd than when I go to a typical Marvel or DC movie. I also think that with the positive word of mouth and repeat viewings, we're going to see a strong second weekend. What are your thoughts on the opening weekend numbers? And do you believe that the over 40 crowd is going to continue going back to the movies? Or was this a one-off? Thanks and bring on the filthy. Thanks a lot for saying that in Benji. And this nearly doubled Tom Cruise's previous best opening weekend. I think it was like 65, 66, 67 million dollars was his biggest opening weekend ever. And that was for War of the Worlds. That was his biggest opening weekend ever. This nearly doubled it. The official tally is $124 million that this movie made. By the way, with an opening weekend of $124 million, it is the largest opening of any movie that's not a comic book or a Disney film. Nice. In four years, not since Jurassic, the last Jurassic World movie in 2018, did a movie open this big that wasn't a, a Disney, Marvel, or, a, or Star Wars, or a, a comic book film. Biggest one in four years. This is a movie that I said for a couple of years building up to it. This is far too late to do a Top Gun movie. I mean, it might be all right, but it's too late. I changed that tune when they showed us the first 15 minutes of it a year and a half ago at the, the previous CinemaCon. I'm like, oh my God, this movie looks awesome. And then we saw the whole thing at Comic-Con or at CinemaCon a couple of weeks ago. And it is awesome. I, I And I saw it again the other night. We have been singing the praises of this movie for a while. This movie is so freaking good. This is the movie. And I, I can't remember if it was Ray that said it or something. This is a summer movie, man. This, this Top Gun movie is a summer movie. I took Anne to see it the other night. She absolutely loved it. And she's not a big fan of the original Top Gun. And she just thought it was absolutely fantastic. I loved watching it on the big screen again. This is just such a great movie and one that deserves all the success in the world. But considering the fact that Tom Cruise has never opened a movie to bigger than $65 million and the fact that the previous movie was 36, 38 years ago, can't remember. I didn't think it would crack 100. I, said, I think it'll get close to 100. It'll be the biggest opening. I think it crack 100. But it did. $124 million. Ooh. And there's even bigger meaning to that. This comes to us from the folks over at Variety who wrote the following. Audiences over 40 years old, the people who were top of mind when Paramount greenlit another Top Gun, turned out in force, 55% of the ticket buyers, which is impressive because that is the demographic that has been the most reluctant to return to theaters. Still, the dazzling stunts in Maverick managed to entice significant percentage of millennial moviegoers. 45% of the people who went to go see the movie were 35 or younger who were not alive when Top Gun opened 36 <laughs> years ago. The film's positive word of mouth should be very helpful in continuing to reach younger crowds. And that, again, comes to us from Variety. And this is why, number one, this, which, by the way, Top Gun Maverick, now the biggest opening in Memorial Day movie history. Yeah, I think it beat out one of the uh, Pirates of the Caribbean movies okay. uh, for that thing. It is now the biggest Memorial Day opening weekend in history. Tom Cruise's biggest opening in his illustrious career. All that is great. Biggest opening for a non-Disney or DC movie in four years. But maybe the most important part of that, and maybe the part that the industry and theaters are most excited about, was that little fact that Variety put in that article. The people who have not been coming back to the movie theaters in good numbers are the over 40 crowd at this point. They have been the slowest to readopt coming back in. To have a movie like Top Gun come out and 55% of those record numbers are that over 40 crowd, the demographic that haven't been coming back to the movies yet. And what happens when you go to a movie that you love? You want to come back to the movies again. When you go somewhere that has a great experience, where it's a great restaurant, a movie, strip club, whatever, when you go out and have a fabulous time... You are more likely to go back. I don't know where that came from, but you are more likely to go back if you At have a good time. the movie theater, you don't get covered in glitter. <laughs> Usually. Maybe. Usually. Maybe. Depends on what you're doing. There's some movie theaters. Yeah. Ford mm. DX, now including glitter. <laughs> glitter. <laughs> Sploosh. So anyway, um, it, it's extremely significant. So just add that to another impressive feat 
by this movie. Anyway, Rob, you saw Top Gun. I know you loved this movie. What do you think about this $124 million that it made, breaking all kinds of records uh, in its way doing it, but also bringing back audiences who haven't been coming back to the movie theaters yet? What do you see as the most important thing here? Well, I went and saw it again yesterday at the Chinese Theater in Hollywood. And, um, you know, bought these are bought by a friend of mine, bought them weeks ago in anticipation of, of seeing the film. What I thought was really surprising was, first of all, it was very crowded. And the audience, they cheered multiple times. Multiple, Cried. <laughs> multiple claps, cries, sniffles, and whatever. And it, it to me, you know, this really was a passion project of Tom Cruise. He brought in Chris McQuarrie, an Academy Award-winning screenwriter, to rewrite the script. He worked with Joseph Kaczynski, a director that he, he, he worked with on Oblivion, which is, a, I think, a very underrated film. You know, and, and this movie was crafted by people that made this film their life's work i mean not that they don't have a lot more work to do but this was this was made by people a studio do you think it was a good bet to make a 36 year old sequel to a movie i mean it probably maybe a little it's not like tom cruise is not dwayne johnson he didn't open movies to 100 million dollars right. though he's had a very consistent career so from a spreadsheet standpoint in this day and age not necessarily the best idea but I think this movie stands as a testament to show you what is possible when you have really good people who know exactly what they're doing, who are trusted by the studio to do what they do. And they're not spending $200 million. I mean, maybe they did. This probably was a very expensive movie. But this movie was exactly what it was supposed to be. And it was carefully crafted. And the studio knew what they had. They didn't go, you know what? It's the pandemic. We're going to put this on Paramount+. Plus." Yeah, to which Tom Cruise said, "No, over no. my dead body." Yeah, I mean, they they absolutely knew what they had, and you know what, Tom Cruise, they believed in what they had, and you don't see that a lot. And I think that they've been justly rewarded because if you look at the foreign numbers too, it's also grossed another almost hundred million dollars overseas. So you're looking at close to with our four day weekend, probably a two hundred and fifty million dollar opening for this film. And it didn't have a week launch in advance in European territories. I mean, this is basically over the last four days. This movie's a monster hit. And for Paramount, you know, it's the culmination. They've had a really good year between Sonic 2 and mm -hmm. Jackass and the movies that they've released this year. It's been it's been it's been their year. They've, really. yeah, yeah, they've made money on all their films. And I think this is a testament to what studio filmmaking should be all about. And I think it's a fantastic result for everybody involved. I think that this film is a wonderful movie. Now seeing it twice, we saw it at CinemaCon for the first time, seeing it again in, in IMAX with a crowd. I mean, John, when you know when we go and saw Endgame together, and and on your left, you and people realize what was happening. The portals open, and to hear people even at Disney, the jaded genre press like we are, whatever, they cheer. This is exactly why people go to have that collective experience in a movie theater. And we need more of this. Look no, no further than Top Gun to be like, you know what, studios? This is what you've got to give us. And this is what you, these are the filmmakers you have to have working for you. And, and don't let, don't make decisions in boardrooms about what movies should get made. Find the passionate filmmakers that are going to deliver this kind of entertainment mm -hmm. because that's going to get you're going to win man and by the way i don't know if they did this in your theater but in mine when when i took and to go see it there was a message from tom cruise yep. at the beginning there so was for those of you some of you guys may have seen this already but if you haven't like so there was a big message from tom cruise being talking to say first of all thank you for coming to see this because when we made this i knew one thing this movie needed to be in a movie theater and our audience erupted in applause when, when that happened same with ours now now let me ask you this since you brought that up what did you think of that i had never seen anything quite like that before i've seen it on home video and stuff but not in the theater how'd you feel about that i message? i've seen it done a couple of times but for different reasons like i've seen a couple of um you know amc will get us started or something hello amc moviegoers yeah. We, yeah. we were very excited to make this movie and we're so glad to hear so please sit back and enjoy but but this one was like tom cruise saying who has been like one of the biggest champions of the cinematic experience. This is like Tom Cruise saying, hey, we're, we're coming out of this. Like we survived it. We held on to this. We didn't roll over and play dead when everybody else said, just put it on streaming. We were like, no, this is this movie is for a movie theater. And man, there's I'm going to enjoy watching this movie on my TV screen whenever it's oh, yeah. comes there. 
but it will not equal the experience you have watching in a theater. We want to take a second and thank the sponsors of this video, Me Undies. Guys, when you've got a job like mine where you're sitting down talking about movies or sitting down and watching a lot of movies, you learn to appreciate a really good pair of underwear. And this summer, guys, why suffer through junk swamp with that 20 pairs in a plastic bag junk that we normally buy for ourselves when you could be enjoying this summer wearing the most breathable, softest, most comfortable underwear out there me undies. I've been wearing me undies for a little while now, and I'm telling you, I am never going back. Because let's face it, guys, summer is sweaty, but your butt doesn't have to be. With me undies, light and breathable micro model fabric, you can stay comfy and cool all summer long. They have super fun seasonal prints and tons of styles to choose from in any size, from extra small to 4XL, so you can bring the beach to your butt without ever leaving your living room. Make it a soft summer with me undies. Me undies has a great offer for my viewers and listeners. For any first-time purchasers, you get 15% off. If you sign up for their free-to-join membership, you can apply that 15% off to their already discounted membership prices. So to get 15% off your first order and 100% satisfaction guarantee, go to MeUndies.com slash Campia. That's MeUndies.com slash Campia. Anyway, Chris, you see all this stuff about mm -hmm. the records break, biggest Memorial Day, biggest Tom Cruise opening, bringing the over 40 crowd back into yeah. the theaters again. What stands out to you most in all this? Oh, man. Well, first of all, I'm so glad you guys brought up how Paramount was just not going to, well, really Tom Cruise, but Paramount <laughs> was not going to compromise on this. And that's something we just kept hearing time and time again at CinemaCon in their presentations, too, about how important the movie going experience is, how studios need to work with these movie theaters, how it's a hand in hand symbiotic relationship, right? And I think that's why Paramount amount is having such a good year is because they are listening to that instinct. They're going, no, there's a reason why we put things in a theater and we don't do streaming. That leads me to what I think is the biggest takeaway here of the 40 plus crowd coming back, because my parents are big streamers now of, oh, we'll just watch it when it's on demand. Oh, we don't need to go to the movies. We won't deal with that. It's fine. Don't worry about it. Whereas it used to be one of their favorite things. Every weekend they'd go to a movie. And this is the movie that I know my dad's finally going to go see in a theater. Yeah. At CinemaCon, it's the only thing that he was texting me about. It was just like, did you see it yet? What did you think? What did you think? Did you even see the original one? Um, and I was like, I, I did. Um, and then, you know, I've talked about this on this show. I, I'm not as in love with this movie, but I do think it is a phenomenal film that, from an objective filmmaker standpoint, is a wonderful, wonderful movie, right? It's beautifully shot. It is well acted. There's a great story in here. It hits nostalgia points for other people. So I think... If something's going to get you back in theaters, it is something that has this kind of scope, right? It is shot so magnificently. Hearing the roar of spectacle. those jets, it really is. It really, really is. And, and I say that truly as somebody who's just like, I still enjoyed this, going to see this. I tell everyone they should go see this in a theater. You know, it's, it's something that I'm kind of neutral on, but I'm very, very, very adamant that you go see this in a movie theater instead of waiting to see it 60 days from now when it comes on streaming because it's not going to be the same experience. And this is how you should experience this movie and see if it ticks all those boxes for you. You know what else, John, too? And I, I, kudos to Paramount for putting out that Mission Impossible Dead Reckoning Part 1 yeah, trailer. Yeah, with it, yeah, we're not getting that movie for more than a year. It's not supposed to come out until June of next year. But seeing that trailer again with all of these global locations, all of these elaborate set pieces, I, I, I mean, and that was, it was watching the, the way it was set up at the Chinese. So that trailer happened, then the Tom Cruise message happened, and then Top Gun yeah. started. And I'm like, okay. This is like, talk about showmanship. I'm sure Tom <laughs> Cruise might have like leaned in and said, you know what I'd like? I'd really like it if you we play this Dead Reckoning trailer because like you talk about, you don't need to put trailers out a year in advance anymore. This was very, this was very calculated. And when I saw that trailer, I'd seen that trailer. I've watched that trailer like a hundred times already, but I hadn't seen it in the big screen. And in the big screen, you could see all these details that you can't see small. And I'm like, I was so jazzed and then it was like, it was almost like when Tom Cruise, when the, the bullet, it's just a shot of him. It's a simple shot yeah, of Tom Cruise. Yeah, just sitting in a chair. And I'm like, Tom Cruise is here to speak just to me. <laughs> you know, and and, he, and, and that's kind of how I felt about it. And I'm like, <laughs> by the, when that man, I'd seen the movie before. And it's so great because the Paramount logo comes on. You hear this, like you pointed out, the gong, the top, the top yeah, gun gong. Mm -hmm. I'm like, I felt like I was about to meet. God himself in my cathedral of, <laughs> of cinema. And by the way, you know, Tom Cruise often talks about 
the reason he does his own practical stunts is because it just brings another level of realism feel. You know where I really noticed that most in this movie? Watching it again, I really took notice. Something as simple as that they very easily could have tried to do in post visuals and all that kind of stuff. Tom Cruise in his jet launching his F-18 from an aircraft carrier. And like, you just like, it feels different when it's real. Mm -hmm. Like, it's just, just something about that. Anyway, guys, question is for you. Top Gun is shattering a lot of different box office marks and records all over the place. It's bringing audiences back to the theater who haven't started going back to the theaters yet. What do you think about all this news? What out of all those facts stands out to you as being the most significant? Did you see the movie? If so, did you like it? Maybe it didn't work for you. Whatever you guys think, jump down into the comment section below and let us know your thoughts.